Are you fucking serious? I don't know what the fuck happened there. should take care of them well enough. How you do it is up to you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Fuck! Boss, come in. Boss! Boss! What's up, dragon? Because what I need... Because I need that C4. But I actually put the initial fucking point for it right up on top of the goddamn mountain. for my opinion like it's a good game it deserves at least a fair chunk of the reputation it has my only problem is that this is a game I don't tend to be very good at um, it's very very difficult for me which obviously takes away from the pleasure of playing and the reason it's hard for me to play this is because this is not my style Like, I am not very good at first-person shooters like COD. I'm even worse at stealth FPS games. Thank you. 
Why not? God damn it! Snake, talk to me! Snake! Snake! Enter the Eastern Communications Post and destroy the target equipment. The location is on your iDroid.
God damn it. Got him. Shot him in the ass. God damn it, you fucking piece of shit. Not motherfucker! Stop that! You destroyed their anti air radar? It wasn't one of the targets, but that's put a hole in their air surveillance. The chopper will be able to get in close now. You can designate a landing zone near the outpost. Okay, that's the one I'm missing. Die down just a minute. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 
At least until I can identify the fucking threat. I'm doing okay, Ace. I'm not doing great. I'm doing all right. Now I get a chance to use the storm to my advantage, which means a Soviet soldier got to live. That sounds like a you problem, Ace. And that's what microwaves are for. major problem with a game like this and it's a problem I I'm not gonna lie it is the same problem I have with like any FPS or stealth game I don't like sitting back and letting, you know, other people or other stuff do the work for me. I don't like that. No, I want to be the guy that's all up in your grill just beating the piss out of you every which way from Sunday. Like, that's how I play. That's how I roll. Like, if you ever watch me or play a fighting game with me, I don't do well on the defensive side of it. I don't. I hate the defensive side of it. I like being on the attack constantly. Just don't let up. Don't let them get a, a chance to... To do whatever the hell they're wanting to do or, or whatnot. No, no. I got to be the one that's in your face pushing the fight constantly. Like, that's, that's how I play. You can't do that in a game like this. In a game like, you know, Metal Gear Solid 5, you can't push the fight the way I prefer to do. You have to rely on stealth and misdirection and all this other stuff to get the fucking job done. And that kind of tactics just does not sit well with me.
This is why I like, you know, this is why I am a primarily a retro variety streamer with a specialization in RPG slash JRPG style games. This is why that is the kind of streamer that I am. Because in RPG, JRPGs, I can push the envelope as hard as I want every single time. And to be honest, I'm not really going to suffer very much for doing that. You know, I, I could do it, get away with it, and be fine. But in a game that relies almost entirely on stealth options and misdirection options, I am like so out of my element and out of my depth. And it kind of, you know, I, I'm not going to lie, the, it, it kind of scares me a little bit how much a game like this throws off how I typically play a game my hyper aggressive play style army is going like crazy thanks to you boss in fact it's getting downright crowded around here to bring a greater number of people on board we'll need to expand our facilities to that end, I've created a base development unit. It has two roles, material refinement and platform construction. I'll start with the material refinement part. The base development unit procures material resources on a regular basis according to its level. The materials are stored in containers and placed on the deck of Mother Base. Once they're finished being processed, they can finally be put to use. By using these materials to build new platforms, we'll be able to add a greater <coughs> number of staff to our ranks. We don't need any specific instructions from you to refine the materials, but I want you to be the one to decide how we construct platforms. Once we have sufficient GMP and the required material resources, you can issue construction orders from your iDroid. Are you like, I, I don't disagree with you, Dragon Slayer. I don't. I'm just saying that I have very much a preferred play style. Okay? I have my preferred method of play in a game. Like let me let me let me give you an example. I play Injustice and Injustice 2. I love those games. I think they're great fighting games. And it's some of the few uh, DC games that I've played that I thought were just phenomenal from the ground up. I could never be a professional tournament fighter in those games for two reasons. Reason number one. I don't have the timing and coordination for proper combo use. I just don't. It's the dog you brought. <laughs> what about troublemaker? I, I, I can't lie. I, I don't have the timing and the coordination required to be uh -huh. like professional that. in fighting games. I prefer short, sweet, basic combos, which in the professional circuit just aren't going to get you anywhere. I suspect you. The even bigger reason is. I am super hyper fucking aggressive. I am constantly on the attack. I try to never defend if I can avoid it. I hate defending. I prefer pushing the opponent, you know, just throwing the opponent as off their game as I can manage. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my preferred play style. That's what I'm good at. Come on, Didi. Again, 
That is a massive no-no. In the professional fighting game circuits. You cannot be hyper-aggressive. It's just not how that works. You know, I could, if I really wanted to, I could make an effort to go into the speedrun circuit as a professional. With at least certain uh, RPG, JRPG style games. But I don't really want to. Like, there are some um, RPG games that I know really well. Uh, like, I know Legend of the Dragoon pretty goddamn well. I could speedrun that for a profession if I really wanted to. But, again, you know, like, speedrunning is something else that kind of goes against the grain for how I normally play. Because I've been playing RPG games pretty much my entire life. And one thing I've learned with RPG games is that you search everything. Like, you spend that time to grind. You spend that time to search and, and make money and get gear. And, you know, set yourself up so that when you hit the end of the game you're ready to go which is probably a big reason why I was so disappointed with Final Fantasy 8 when I beat it for the first time like, most of the game was fantastic until I got to that final boss fight. I, I fucking hated it. The final boss fight was trash. I've never had an easier boss fight in my life. As I did with that final boss battle in Final Fantasy VIII. It was fucking sad. Um, 
Um, I could, I could actually speed run. Um, like I could play it and speed run it in one day. Uh, it's worth of um, streaming, and that's uh, the the Zelda on the Super Nintendo. Um, I, I don't remember the exact title. I could beat that in six hours, give or take, about an hour. And I know I can because I've fucking done it before. I've owned the, the actual cartridge on multiple occasions in the course of my life, and I have beat that game in six fucking hours. Because it's not that hard. And I've done it with almost a hundred percent completion rating in about six hours that means getting all your your gear magicked up by the fish people and you know all of that I've done that before like it's not that hard it doesn't take that much goddamn effort to to speed run um that particular just once i want to touch this pot um wait what you don't want to touch it no that uh that particular um zelda game it's one of the easiest if not the easiest zelda game to play um now that i've actually beaten Final Fantasy 8 I could probably beat that in a speed run in like maybe 40 hours give or take assuming of course that I'm willing to play the games in a fashion that is essentially anamathema to my normal style of play. Like, that's the thing. It's, it's... I am 45 in July. So I'll be 45 in... Just a little over four months. Or just about four months. Um, I've played the way that I play basically my whole life. And they're not kidding when they say it's uh, difficult to teach old dogs new tricks. Because it is. Like, it would be very difficult to teach me to, to play an RPG game in a fashion that's different than what I'm used to. I'm skilled in a specific 
Um. A specific. Um. A specific type of game. A specific series of games. I mean, I, I appreciate the, the love, but I'm not afraid to step up to the plate and admit that um... My skill set is limited in many respects. Welcome back, boss. Like, I'm okay at shooters. I'm alright at fighting games. I can't play a racing game really to save my life except Burnout and Mario Kart. I'm good, maybe even great at RPG JRPGs. I'm mediocre at, um... At, um... Um... Sports games, most sports games. The only sport game I'm any real good at is um, WWE games. Uh, secondary uh, strength in UFC fighting games. Um, and pretty much any other game I kinda suck at like I'm not gonna lie like right before the attack Huey was in the control tower to prepare for the inspectors he was with them basically with any other game I'm or any other game type other than like I guess I'm really good at TCG games like, I could play a TCG video game really well. It might take me a hot minute to get the hang of a deck or whatever, but I could do it. Actually, IRL play Yu-Gi-Oh! Digimon. Both TCGs. But I got out of Yu-Gi-Oh! because right about the start of the pandemic, fucking Konami basically destroyed the game. Uh, I can't fucking stand Pokemon. Pokemon is shit. I'm a Digimon guy all the way, and I can prove that Digimon is superior to Pokemon.
Well, I mean, first off, Yu-Gi-Oh! been going to shit for years regardless. Like, there's, there's no questions of that. It's unfortunate, and I don't like having to admit to it, but it really had been going to shit for years. But when the pandemic hit, um... Um, Dex. Like, like the bottom two levels in online play. You will understand what I mean. Are basically one turn win or and or first turn win Dex. Basically, they want to go first, and if they don't get the right cards to set their set their field, they lose. Nobody's playing decks anymore that require like six samurai. Yo, know, any of the fun good decks. People don't fucking play that anymore. It's all about, well, if I can't set up for the win turn one, then I can't win the game. And then uh the new Yu-Gi-Oh! anime came out that introduces um, a new play style and, and I fucking I, 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 I can't say enough that I hate it it's called speed duels basically you can summon and special summon as many times as you want in one turn, but you only get three monster uh, zones and three uh, spell and trap card zones. And that's essentially all you get for the entirety of the duel. So that's what you have to work with. And I fucking hate it. Um, and that's just two of the things that Konami did. Uh, the, the worst thing that Konami did was... Konami decided that it was going to be a good idea to basically poison the fan, uh, the 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 player base when it comes to card valuations. And what I mean by that is they released a bunch of sets to keep Yu-Gi-Oh alive because it was dying during the pandemic. Like, really, really, really quite, uh, quickly. Okay? Like, really quickly. Like, they went from a set once every three to six months to basically a set every two. Every two to three months. During the entirety of the pandemic. Which really fucked with card value and the trading base. And it made it so that players are just vicious, evil fucking pricks when it comes to making fair deals for cards. So, to kind of give you an example, if I needed a, say, a Black Rose Dragon... Um, I would have to be willing to offer 
and not just offer, but basically sell my fucking soul for a fucking black rose. Like, that's how bad it's got with the, the player community in terms of buying, selling, and trading. And nobody will buy, sell, or trade anything unless it's the high-value cards anymore. Like, the, the, the base is just... It's completely fucked now. It is absolutely, completely, and utterly fucked. And there is not a goddamn thing that Konami is willing to do to fucking change it. Oh yeah, the, the, the base has become super fucking toxic. Like, I have 10 or 12 decks built right now. All of them are really good. But they all require thought and strategy and brain power. DDDs, Harpies, Six Samurais, you know, and a variety of other theme decks. All of them require strategy and brain power to play. The new deck, the new decks, these, these new OTK, FTK bullshit builds, you don't need to think at all to play those. Absolutely fucking not. There is no goddamn thought required for these builds. So, you know, pre-pandemic, I could go to a tournament and I stood a very good chance of winning Pretty much no matter what deck I played. I could pull out basically any one of my decks and know that I stood a good chance of at least getting top 8, if not winning. Now there's not even a tournament for Yu-Gi-Oh! Within a half hour to an hour drive of me. That's how bad Konami fucked up Yu-Gi-Oh! They, they, they fucked it up so bad and they caused the player base to get so fucking toxic that most stores that used to carry Yu-Gi-Oh! and used to do all these Yu-Gi-Oh! events and shit like, like uh, leagues and tournaments and shit will have nothing to fucking do with Yu-Gi-Oh! anymore. That's how bad it's gotten since the start of the pandemic. So, about a year after the pandemic started, Yu-Gi-Oh! decided, well, we're going to make Master Duel. We're going to release it. Do you know why they released it? I bet you don't. Here's why. The in-game microtransactions. They release it as an FPS with microtrans because they need the fucking money. They are losing money on Yu-Gi-Oh! I live about five blocks from one of the biggest, most well-known card and comic shops, or game and comic shops, in my state. They haven't carried Yu-Gi-Oh! since about uh, mid to late 2020. Or 2019, rather. Because of what Konami did to the game. Because of how badly Konami fucked that game. And anybody that comes in and tries to tell you Konami did not fuck that game is a fucking fool. I have been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! for over 20 years.
And I could tell you, with all those years of experience sitting behind me, that Yu-Gi-Oh! is not worth the play anymore. Yu-Gi-Oh! is fucking trash. Digimon, on the other hand, Dragon Slayer, you must get into the Digimon TCG. Oh my god, it's amazing. But we are going to rate out to uh, SMCC Ready 1, who is currently playing Madden 24. Because it is that... T oh, shit, it is way past that time. I need to fucking go eat and relax and get, start getting ready for bed. So, y'all be good to yourselves, each other, the planet. Y'all have fun. Stay the fuck out of trouble. Um, exercise all the rights, responsibilities, and privileges of whatever area you happen to, to be from. As viewers, show that love and respect to your streamers. As streamers, make sure you show that love and respect to your viewers. Because while we could do this job without them, it wouldn't be any fun. This is your immortal Sith Emperor signing the fuck out for the night.